<clears throat> Welcome, friends. To another Rolling with EM video. I don't really have a destination today. Well, I kind of do. Right now I'm at um, College Park. Thinking of heading up to um, Yorkville. I'm going to take Carl Carlton to College Cross and go up Bay, probably. We're just passing here, Fran's Restaurant. Friends has been around for years. This is a favorite with um, people who have always wanted the, um, um, to have something to eat around uh, after hours. After leaving the bar, it was always a popular spot. I wasn't sure if I was going to film today, especially because well, while it is 26, uh, there is threats of a thunderstorm. So I don't know if I how long I'll be able to film for. But I think I was kind of inspired by some guy came up to me and said, "Hey, I follow you on on YouTube," <clears throat> and it was like, oh, "Great, thanks." I just was not expecting that. You know, I guess that was my first time, sort of, running into somebody who followed me. And uh, I thought that was, uh, I went, you know what? Maybe I should film today. Cause I just wanted to be able to tell about that. So we're just getting over here to Bay Street, but <clears throat> right now we're passing Toronto Police Headquarters. And it's hard to see there because the reflect you see the reflection of me, but on the main floor here is the uh, Toronto Police Museum and Discovery Center. And I'm just wanting to see what this is. Oh, it's just something about talking about the history of Toronto policing. The first established police department was in 1834. So at Bay and College, I think we're going to go north. Because while I've done something on uh, Yorkville, I don't think I've ever sort of filmed getting to Yorkville. So that's what today is going to be. <clears throat> of course, this section of Bay Street is used to be a mecca for business and government. These days, a lot of condos. I do not know what the original purposes of that building was but that building right in front of us well actually I'll, maybe I'll, it, I can try and see if I can read that uh, what's engraved there but uh, it says okay I cannot read that but that building I knew, I knew that, that uh, building as the address for there was a car, a very famous car dealership that was there for years and years. And it was called Addison on Bay. And it was a Cadillac dish dealership. Of course, you know, being downtown, it had to be a Cadillac dealership. I think the only time I've come up here, this sort of this way, I was on the other side of this building here <clears throat> in going, cutting through the laneway that was going up this way. And I pointed out that building that is still, and I think it's gonna be for years, it's gonna be covered up. So they're doing a major renovation on this one government building. <gasps> and it looks like there was one that was made, I don't know, that was parking lot or there was another building there and it got taken down. Get oh, across quickly. The light's changing. I'm gonna stop for a second, move something around. It was making too much noise. Yeah, because most of the buildings in this, uh, on that side of the street, 
are government uh, or provincial government buildings. And again, as I said with other videos, when I come by those buildings, is where do where are those people? Well, I know that a lot of them are working anyways from now from home, but before that, where were they planning on housing those people that worked in these offices, in these buildings? Are they renting out other buildings? Who knows? But maybe they've moved them all out, or they've got maybe they're turning these into condos. I have no clue. But you know the sign, it doesn't say renovation thing, it's restoration. So that says that, yeah, I bet hopefully the original tenant being the government of Ontario will go back in there. And this corner here, this used to be the, um, the Sutton Place Hotel. It was when, uh, <clears throat> Celebrities would come in town, especially for the film festival. This was the hotel to stay at, the Sutton Place. But now, it became a condo. Now the big hotel for celebrities is the um, Ritz-Carlton, which is down at, uh, I believe, on King Street, in the west of University. or Wellington Street, something like that. So yeah, that, that building there is a private building. There is an off government office, that I understand. And this here <clears throat> looks like a, to be a um, condominium with some interesting uh, balconies in the sense that they, they're glass, but they're, or, but they're not see-through. Because most of the buildings I'm seeing, except for one building in my way ahead there, they're all condos down here. And we're here at St. Joseph Street. And a look down St. Joseph Street. I believe this was... No, this isn't the spot. Sorry, I was thinking something different. So, there are two churches here. There's St. Basil's, and I can't remember the name of that church. And, uh, again, they are part of the University of Toronto as well. Because a lot of that land is still University of Toronto. And what is with that donkey statue. That's something very new I've never seen. Looks like it's got like casts on its leg. Way up. But I'm not sure if what that building was there. It looks like that, that facade was something that was left over from a previous building and I don't remember what it was. But they could have just made it look like it was a facade of an old building. I don't know. And we're passing the Firkin on Bay Street, but this used to be the Fox and the Fiddle. Again, with Firkin and Fox and Fiddle are other are chains of restaurants in Toronto. But it looks like actually the Firkin is not open. Oh, and notice the painting with the little girl in there? That's a Banksy, but it's obviously a reproduction of a Banksy.
So as I said, I didn't really think about, uh, it was, wasn't much to talk about this stretch of, uh, of Bay Street simply because it's uh, Condominium Alley. But it wasn't for many, many, many years. Like, over in that direction, that was all properties, uh, buildings and houses that belonged to the University of Toronto. But I guess they sold off some of those properties and uh, developers put up condos. Okay, and then coming up here on the right... Is another condo building, but it's been here for years. And it's part of the uh, Manual Life Center. Because the Manual Life Center, which has the BMO thing up on top, uh, that is a. There's a lot of government offices over in there, but there's also some bank offices. And then this here was the residential tower. And I believe this building was built sometime in the 1970s. <clears throat> and I'm just looking around. And I think ever since this building was built, one of the um, anchor flagships of this uh, of this mall section of the thing has always been Bay Blur Radio. And it's a high-end stereo company. And I still don't know how they exist, but I guess they sell televisions now as well, but but they were like high-end, hi-fi stereo equipment. And of course, one of their newer tenants has been around for about 20 years has been Indigo. Indigo Books and Music. This was actually one of the, I believe, one of the first stores that was opened by Indigo. Indigo is um, uh, a chain of uh, bookstores that is uh, owned by uh, Heather Reisman and it watch who eventually, what, there was two chains at, Ken, at one point in the uh, the uh, 80s and 90s or 90s really and it was uh, Indigo and Chapters and eventually uh, Indigo purchased and bought up Chapters and the other store that's been here since this building was built has been Burks Burks is a very high end jewelry store Hey, I don't do not know what this is. Oh, somebody's uh, handing out some uh, some sort of drinks. Wow, look at the lineup. Like, is it? I'm wondering if it's if it's what is it they're handing out? The people are lined up for it. It's some sort of uh, fresh fresh pressed juice. And I'll just show you from here the lineup that they have. <clears throat> oh, but I could, hey, for cherry, I probably would line up there. Blueberry, Sierra. Thank you. Okay, well. <clears throat> I don't think that uh, my video wants to stay on this on this uh, lineup, so I'm going to have to pass on this, unfortunately. Yeah, okay. So this is a nice old uh, VW. Oh, they're asking people that they win a chance of trip, 
Trans- chance to win a trip to Venice. <clears throat> so I'll see if it, I'll zoom in on the uh, QR code. Oh. Okay, well, I'll see if uh, people can click on it from my video. Oh, I, I'm doing a live, I'm doing a, a stream right now. <clears throat> All right, so, hey, you, you might try and win a chance to thing. But this entrance here is, again, one of the newest things to come to here. Unfortunately, they opened just before the pandemic, but luckily they've survived. And this is Italy, and it's all food from Italy, okay. or inspired by Italy. But I think at this point, I'm going to turn around because that's not where I intended to go to. I my, my goal is to get to Yorkville, which is just over on the next block. And again, I'll show you one last time this lineup. Wow, the lineup seems to have a little disconnect, but I heard of something about a cherry flavored one, but hey. So we're gonna continue. Sorry? I, I was just saying I was commenting on my video about oh, okay, cherry okay. flavor. Yeah, yeah. I've never heard of this uh, this brand. Vivo. This brand. Is it new? Yeah, so it's about three years old. Yeah. So it started in the in the East Coast. Yep. And it slowly made its way across Canada. And now it's available all across Canada. It's available in parts of Europe, parts of Asia. Plans to expand to the United States soon. Yep. Yeah. So it's uh, it's a you too. It's an all Canadian, all natural product. So most of the product, the water and the fruit, are sourced from Nova Scotia, with the cherries being sourced from Ontario. Oh, great! Yeah. I love Ontario cherries. Yeah. And all yeah, and all the all the uh, ingredients again, all natural. It's just natural mineral water and fresh pressed or cold pressed fruit and we only add a bit of carbon uh, carbonization right huh. a little bit of co2 and that's all that's in the product and do you find it in most stores i guess most major grocery stores yeah. okay i'll have to look for the cherry flavor because i'd be yeah. interested to try yeah, yeah i mean if you want to get in the line no i'm i'm in the middle of a video and i'd, right. I'd like to do Time one cut I, you know i got to do one uh, i don't know how long you'll be going to be here for so yeah. i want you're promoting the, you're promoting our product so here oh. the cherry. okay thank cherry. you Enjoy. Well, thank you for that guy for giving me a cherry thing. And it's actually not in a plastic bottle. It's in a glass bottle. I will put it away for uh, the next little while because I don't want to accidentally drop it. So... Well, we can go over to Yorkville that way through the, uh, the what is it, the Mink Mile. Well, let's go past the uh, Yorkville subway station, I mean, which is basically the Bay subway station. And as I pointed out in a previous video, there's a um, elevator at Bay Subway to get from the subway platform up to um, the level where you pay your fare. Unfortunately, you have to almost go over to Young Street to be able to get an elevator to go down into a subway station. So why not just go to the Young subway station? Doesn't make much sense. <clears throat> Maybe they're hoping at some point when that property gets redeveloped that uh, there'll be an immediate elevator down to the subway. But right now, you almost have to go see the CIBC building. That's where you have to go over to to get into the subway that's right there. Kind of counterintuitive, but but it's, it's the only way they can get around and calling it uh, an accessible station.
So we're going on, on Cumberland Street right now. Cumberland runs from Avenue Road and behind me it travels all the way to Young Street. Again, there's a nice patio with except for this uh, espresso bar. For this. It's a bakery Rocco. And uh, unfortunately, I'm hearing some cover music, so I'm gonna have to talk over it and uh, make sure that uh, this, uh, there's no copyright claim made on this video. And then somebody else is going by with copyright music. And, uh, well, this section should point out here. I'll wait till it give traffic a chance to go through. So this section of Yorkville on Bel Air is closed off between Yorkville, which is the street to the north, and Cumberland, so that these patios can be full way out. The only problem is uh, the sidewalks are also very narrow, but the space where, um, here I'll show you. So the sidewalks, okay, they're, they're not so crowded right now, but this space, um, while it's open for pedestrians, it's not open for people in mobility devices because they put these uh, pylons here. So I can't go that way. So we're gonna go back, go, go along uh, Cumberland Street here. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with Toronto, Yorkville is, um, it was always the hippie neighborhood of Toronto back in the 60s but uh, eventually it became very gentrified and uh, it's uh, there's not very much inexpensive products you can buy and there's okay here's the easiest way to say it you're not gonna find a Dollarama in this neighborhood that's why there was such uproar when a few years back a winners which is uh, uh, a chain that discounts uh, clothing from major designers but the fact that a winners <clears throat> came into the neighborhood was <gasps> ghastly ghastly it's nice to see the patios to keep that helping to keep the uh, bars and restaurants open here yeah a lot of small boutique shops in here as well as well as some high-end brands. Hmm. It's an interesting sort of uh, roadside stop. Okay, so Hemingway's is uh, a restaurant that is actually probably the um, least expensive I'll just go by it and then we'll go up this lane but Hemingway's is probably the least expensive um, sort of not high-end restaurant it's, a, it's still high-end but it's probably the most uh, reasonably priced restaurant bar in Yorkville and again you can scan the phone I don't know whether you can scan off your off video but hey people can try so I'm just going to go up this uh, Old York Lane and uh, head up to, whoops, sorry, head up towards uh, Yorkville Avenue. And again, beautiful little, there's some cafes and, oh wow, look it up there. And, you know, a little small stores look boutique but I'm sure that uh, the prices are boutique as well or big teak okay so that made it look like I could come through here but um, they didn't you know they had a ramp coming up to this to where I got to but I get to here and uh, it's not accessible it made, it made it look like it was accessible because they want people to be able to come to these stores, but not beyond these stores. So, 
So Yorkville, this is a major, major fail. And then even these stores, they make it look accessible, but none of these stores I could get into. They're all step-ups and they don't have wheelchair ramps going up to them. But yet they've got this ramp here. So what is this ramp supposed to represent? Tell me, tell me what? What, so I can go to a restaurant and sit here on a patio? But no, I can't get into any of the stores because they don't even have temporary ramps. So yeah, that's not very accessible for a place that looked almost accessible. But I guess if you have money, you, you know, you've got uh, people to carry you up the stairs or people to go into the store for you. Uh, Lululemon, which is a Canadian company, which is now fairly large around the world for having uh, you know, yoga clothes. Looks like uh, I'm trying to see where how I can get up. There is a there was a, a, a pathway, but I can't see. Oh, here it is here. It's called Yorkville Lane. And I'm gonna have to just talk over some copyright music. But oh, this is in this interesting way. They've got these um, little light strips going along the pathway with very little overhead light, but I'm sure it must be really nice at night coming through here. I am feeling a few drops of rain. So luckily I'm coming up to a place where I can go into what I used to know as um, the Hazelton Lanes. It's now, I think, called Yorkville Lanes. Hazelton being another. Okay, it seems that my uh, camera has turned itself off because of the heat. So I'm going to end this video here, thinking I've got probably enough uh, footage for now. And uh, I just want to thank you for coming along and rolling with Ian. And I look forward to rolling with you again. But please remember to like this video. And if you haven't already subscribed, and uh, be sure to come back and come rolling again with me. Uh, before I go, I just want to point out something else here. There is a machine that uh, happens to do where you can exchange your, your Canadian funds for Bitcoin. And... Oh, whereabouts? Okay, well, no, it's interesting. Yeah, I can, let's go see that one before I end this video. And, uh, oh, there it is there. So, you basically, you were to put your money in here and uh, you somehow get uh, some sort of receipt for your Bitcoin. The other one looks more like an ATM. This one looks like um, Tommy the Robot. But again, I was ending this video and uh, I want to thank you for rolling along with me. And uh, I think I'm going to continue going through uh, this uh, mall. Not that I'm buying anything. I'm just here because I'm enjoying their air conditioning. And uh, I hope that uh, if you, even if you've subscribed and you've liked and uh, maybe you've made a comment in my things, why not recommend this uh, channel to your friends? Maybe you know somebody who, could, who might enjoy watching the videos that I create. But maybe you don't enjoy my videos, but you, you want me to do something different. Let me know. The only way that I can grow this channel and, uh, you know, is to produce stuff that people want to see. So you've got to let me know what, whether you like this content, whether there's other content I can add, or places, even places you want, you say, you can say that I have not yet uh, 
gone to and uh, that I should uh, go and visit. So for now, thank you very much and uh, come roll again with me soon. Don't forget to subscribe, comment and smash that like button.